Hey everyone. So today let's talk a little bit about some of the mutations in SARS coronavirus 2, specifically mutations in this spike protein. And what do they mean? What do they mean in regards to, you know, new variants or new strains of the SARS coronavirus 2? And how does that play any role at all in the vaccines? So first, let's back up and let's talk about um, the biggest one I think that is in the news right now, it's over in the UK. It's a strain that's called VUI 2020-1201. What does that mean? Variant under investigation 2020, December 01. That's all that means, okay? Well, what they saw is that this is basically a rapidly, you know, um, dividing virus, a uh, version of SARS coronavirus 2 that is spreading and it basically throughout um, much of the UK. But what exactly does it mean? Okay, so first let's get back to talking about the spike protein. Okay, and we'll, we'll talk about what VUI 2020-1201 uh, and how that comes into play. Remember, the spike protein is on the surface of the virus and that spike protein needs to interact with ACE2 receptor on our cells in order to enter the cells. Okay, but the spike protein it's actually three proteins in one. And those three proteins work to put the protein itself into three configurations, all right? Partially open, eh, maybe a little bit of binding, not a lot, all right? A little bit more open, combined better, and a maximally open configuration, okay? So those are the three different uh, configurations that the uh, spike protein can be in in order to bind to the ACE2 receptor and enter our cells. So, one of the big mutations that happened in SARS coronavirus 2 early on in the pandemic, all right, was a mutation that was called D614G. So what does that mean? Let's back up even more, okay? The spike protein is a protein, and let's just say that the, it's just a string of these different building blocks, okay? We call them amino acids, but a string of different building blocks. And so along these uh, building blocks or amino acids, all right, they all have little letters. And let's say it goes from one to whatever, 5,000. So at position 614, there was a D and it got replaced with a G. That's it, D614 G mutation, okay? So that's what that means. But what does that mean in regards to what it's doing to the actual spike protein? So if you look at this here, okay? So first, this first uh, diagram basically shows you the frequency of the D614 mutation early on, as opposed to as it as the pandemic continued and you start to see it a lot more, okay? That's the first thing. But this second graph shows you something else. So it shows you exactly what I talked about earlier in terms of the three configurations of the spike protein, all right? And what we saw is that the D614G mutation causes the spike protein to go from a partially open state to a more open state. So if it's more open, it can bind to ACE2 receptor more easily and it can enter the cells, okay? And then there was debate back and forth on what does that mean? Does it mean the virus is more virulent, less virulent? You know, and that's a debate that happens, again, ongoing in science. Remember what I said, hashtag nerd shit, right? That's what scientists do, sit back and debate these things. But that D614G mutation actually usually came along with about three other mutations, okay? So now let's get to the BUI 2020-1201, okay? And that particular uh, strain of SARS coronavirus 2. So lo and behold, what does the BUI 2020-1201 strain have? It has the D614 mutation, but it has some other mutations. Remember I told you the other three that come along with D614G, and then it has a bunch of other ones. So let's take a look at this, okay? So here you can see these are all, all those blue dots. Those are all like different mutations that exist inside of the spike protein in this new variant under investigation. But what does all of that mean? Possibly not a lot. So go back to this video. And if you remember in this video where I talked about obtaining immunity through the mRNA vaccine, right? And it's actually very similar for the AstraZeneca's vaccine. But the more important thing is with the vaccines, they're, the vaccines are not taking whole versions of the virus. The two that are out right now, Moderna and Pfizer, they're taking a modified version of the spike protein. And, and they're, the cells see that, take it, you know, some of them will basically bring that out of the cell 
it releases them to the cell. The virus, uh, the, the spike protein is floating around in the immune system. Macrophage goes, chops it up, displays pieces of it on its outside surface and presents it for the immune system to say, hey, make antibodies towards this. But the beauty of this, this technique is that the body's making not just one antibody, but thousands of antibodies. Why? Because the macrophage is chopping up that spike protein in multiple different ways. Sometimes it'll be this big, sometimes it'll be this big, sometimes it'll be this big, this big. So it's, it's make, chopping it up and it's presenting all of those different versions on the surface. So the body sees that and makes antibodies to all of those different versions, okay? And so what we're seeing is that even though you've got all of these different small mutations that are happening, right, in the spike protein, it's not enough to basically counteract all the thousands of antibodies that our body is making towards the spike protein. Now, is it possible in the future that a version of, you know, the SARS coronavirus 2 could have mutations, that all of those combinations of mutations could make it to where the vaccine is resistant? Yes, but this is the beauty of the mRNA vaccine. Think of it as interchangeable parts. Instead of the current version of the synthetic mRNA that we're using, we could basically say, okay, let's clone this protein, let's figure out what the sequence is of this new, you know, uh, strain that's out. See the sequence of the spike protein there. Take that sequence, plug that into our vaccine, and basically give that to patients. And that could be something, let's say in a year from now, if there's a new version, we don't have to go back through the stage one, stage two, stage three clinical trials. You know that the delivery mechanism is safe. So now we just take out the old version of the protein, put the new version of the protein in there, and then we move forward. And so I think that's the beauty of this mRNA tech, uh, technology. I think that again, right now, from what we're seeing from this new, you know, BUI 2020-1201, yes, it's got mutations, but those mutations so far are not necessarily proving to be anything that's gonna be resistant to the current vaccines that we have out right now. Um, if that changes, then, you know, we'll make adjustments. But right now, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on spike protein, mutations, and how that relates to, you know, the vaccines. And I think we're still gonna be fine. So uh, stay tuned for the next video. Whatever new comes out with the uh, coronavirus, with vaccines, I'll be posting a video about it very soon afterwards. All right, take care.